All right, so in this problem, we have a table. And in this table, we have the bowling scores of 125 students. So we know that altogether, our students here add up to 125. And that's the total, all of them. And what do they want to know? Okay, what is the experimental probability that the next student who bowls will have a score that is 126 or more? Okay, well, again, experimental probability is the probability based on your experiment. So, really, if you write it as a fraction, as a fraction, on the bottom we'll have the total events or people or things that happened. And in the numerator we'll have the number of times, just counting up the number of times the event happened. Notice I'm being very general here by saying the event happened. That just means what we're looking for happened. Because we're always looking for something different with probability. It could be a win, a loss, it could be a number of, uh, or an age group. We don't know what it is, but we call that the event. So here, that's my fraction. This is my numerator over denominator. So here we know we have 125 students. That's our total event. Total outcome. Excuse me. Let me go back. Let's just say total outcomes, not events. This makes more sense to say that. So the outcomes that happened or all the people in the survey or whatever was going on. Here, that was 125. They tell us that. So we're looking at 126 or more. So be careful, that includes this group and this group. Don't ignore this 15 right here. So in fact, there are 30 and 45, 30 and 15, which is 45 students who are 126 or more, right? So their scores are 126 or more. It's 125 is the total. So our experimental probability is 45. That's the number of times that the event happened or the number of times we get what we're looking for over the total outcomes or the, in this case the total students in the survey and that's it 45 over 125 all right hope that helped